Hello everyone, Jeff here. This week I thought we'd take a look at the process of working on Natalia. I'm not going to uh, make you watch me writing code or anything like that. I'm just going to be working on Natalia for the next couple hours and I thought I'd maybe capture some of the highlights of things that happen along the way. So the thing I'm currently working on is the character create system. And it, it was not a direct, it, I thought it would be a direct port from what we had in the MMORPG, but it turns out it's, it's not really. It's the way I've changed character compositing and because I want this to be mod friendly, it really has to be redone. Uh, that turned out to be quite a bit more work than I was hoping, but it has to be done. So we'll, we'll tackle some of those challenges in this video. The big thing with modding is in the MMO, things like the bloodline list and uh, list of species, they're all hard coded. There's no way to change them. Even if you could make a, a plugin, you couldn't change those lists. You'd have to change the original source. Um, and I don't want it working that way. So I've been slowly moving all of that, all the hard-coded understanding of things like the bloodline list and such like that. I'm taking those out of the actual executable and moving them into um, these kind of JSON style files that are easy to modify. And they also, I, I made a nice system for stacking them so that mods can actually expand an existing file rather than just replace it. And that's really important. We don't, if you have a bunch of mods, you don't want them all fighting over control over a single file. You have to be able to kind of stack changes in a way that doesn't create conflicts. So I had to sort that out. That took a little bit of time uh, over last weekend. Just to, just to have an idea how I'm going to sort uh, solve some of these problems uh, sometimes takes time. So let's uh, find out what we're going to do next. I'm thinking I might do uh, that little process, uh, progress bar along the bottom that kind of walk through, you know, selecting species, bloodline, colors, uh, customize, origin where you you know where the character was born we'll probably have some family histories some bonuses and handicaps so all that there was a, a little bar that went across the bottom that i'd like to add another thing which maybe i'll work on right now um, is i've got the bloodline list here populating and i've got philo starting to work uh, each individual one of these i have to move a bunch of files over and rebuild a bunch of things so I'm, i've got philo starting to work here I did discover a bug though when I clicked back on uh, Vulan, uh, the whiskers don't disappear. So maybe I'll tackle uh, tackle that tickle tackle tackle that right now and see if I can get that sorted out. False is the next question. It's true. Why is it true? Oh, look at that. That's not good. That's real bad. That could have. That's how you end up with a crash bug. Philo. Turn off the breakpoint. It is so slow in debug, and, and this does hurt development speed. Um, I try to avoid doing a lot of debug stuff. Most of the time, I, I work in release actually. Ah, there we go. Fix it. Whiskers are now gone. Now, I, I'd be curious, can we change the colors? Um, when we click on Philo, can we change the default colors of the character? Let's try that real quick. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's better. Um, now we're starting to feel like it's a Philo again. Okay. So, next, let's uh, let's bring back that progress bar. I, just, I, I want it to look a little more complete, you know? Important to spell things correctly when you're a programmer. I'm not a great speller or... Now my coding style has changed and I use a, a variety of new tools. Um, so whenever I'm putting code over like this, the first thing I do is I have to just tidy up. And do we have a new window? Hey, there it is. Okay. Cool. Now we just need to get it so that when we click the next button, it will actually highlight which one we're actually, which step we're on. So. Ooh, the colors are wrong. Okay, I'll have to work on the colors. It's wrong. It's not right, but I'll, I'm, I'm going to move on. Um, I don't want to get hung up on that. So we got Philo, Vulan. I really like to get some of the other ones in here working. So maybe I'll do that now. So what happens? Yeah. 
That was too much hope for it. It would just work. <laughs> so Kisan body one dot D D S is missing. Okay, so that's the part that's missing. I have the meshes in place. I don't have the textures in place. Okay. I'm getting the coral horns to appear is gonna be a task. Do I have all the male meshes too? Oh no, I don't have the male meshes, okay. That would be anything. So let's see, cross our fingers that we don't crash things here. Kind of looks like a key sign. Now I'm not doing any of the character morphs yet, so their face doesn't change shape yet. We'll get there. I'm gonna skip Koro for now. Lupin looks a lot like Vulan. The texture is technically different though. Okay. Koro should crash us. Yeah because of hooves. I guess our next task then is to sort out the hooves thing. Unfortunately, I can't see the hooves because of the way the character is positioned. Um, so, camera controls, let's get that working. I like really long names for my classes. Don't skimp. What's that? Where are, you, where, are you, where are you going? You're way down there. Oh my gosh, and this is what? Yeah. This is usually where things start to go horribly wrong. The character won't render at all, and you're just like, ah, oh, where'd the character go? And it's just gonna be something stupid. But... What'd I tell you? Character's just gone. Now we enter a portion of coding that I like to refer to as complete guesswork. It's just complete. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. Oh, I should have clicked on that. Oh, look, there's a shadow of <laughs> the character. Oh, there's a character. Okay, so we're we're in the ballpark a little bit more now. Let's try zero, add two. I need to get the default. Oh, look, character finally came up in a reasonable spot. That's better. It's not the worst. Um, you can see your whole character. You can look at them. I can now inspect the toes, which was the reason for doing all this. I want to see the hooves on the coro. And then I think I'm going to wrap this up there. So let's get the hooves on the coro. So let's see what we got. Yeah. So I'll do coro last here. We'll zoom out a little bit. Wait, the perspective is a little... Anyway, we'll, we'll sort that out. Uh, Kisan. Colors need a little work. Lupin. Ulan. And now the real question is, do the... Does the core appear correctly? Does it crash? Okay, great. Okay, we've got the antlers. Got the hooves. My colors need work on all of them, but it looks, it looks like it's working. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Uh, tell me what you think of this format. As always, I'm always trying new things, and I, I haven't seen this. I won't see this until I'm done editing, really. So I don't know if this kind of format of following along as I work on things, was it successful? Was it just me mumbling a lot to myself? Was any, any of it interesting? I don't know. So let me know what you think in the comments below, as always. Um, I think next week what I'd like to do is Loco and I have been working on quite a bit of lore stuff. We've been organizing lore. So I'd like to do maybe even as a regular thing, maybe once a month, uh, do an episode of these updates just about the lore and just cover various topics over time. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. So uh, tune in next week if you're interested in that. We'll see how that turns out. And until then, take care.